Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Sean. Okay, I am Jason. My name is Aviva. I play violin with Bayo String Quartet. My name is Ryan Ash. And I'm one of the founding violinists for Bayo String Quartet. Um, I play viola. I play cello with the Bayo String Quartet. And I have a few questions. So, the first question. <clears throat> I can't really remember a time in my life without music. I've been playing the violin since I was four. How long has my relationship with music been? From my earliest memories are listening to my dad practice. Play Chardas, Monte Chardas. Let's see. And that really, I think, comes from the fact that he plays Finlandia and Jason and I would run around and chase bad guys and save princesses together. Oh boy. My parents, um, Sean and my parents, were always listening or playing music in the house. That's, um... I definitely uh, had music around me and was involved in musical activities um, even before then. That's a long time. It took me quite a while to realize that I wanted to play violin professionally. Um, I my earliest memories are of playing um, violin. Uh, whether it be playing uh, duets with Sean or playing string quartet um, at a very young age. I started playing violin at age three. My family. family quartet after that. I can't do the math. Um, when I first thought I wanted to go into music, um, I thought I wanted to be a composer. It was always part of our lives. And then I eventually realized that um, I just wanted to be playing quartet. 26 years? I even really thought that that was just normal. Everybody had was always playing music in the home. 25 years? Something like that. What does chamber music offer in a time of isolation and uncertainty? I think that's very personal. When I think of string quartet, I think of the variety of how you can listen to it. Uh, it offers something that is a very... Chamber music for me offers what it always offers. It tells this uh, beautiful, engaging story. I love going to the symphony. I love going to see rock concerts. But to me, chamber music is just a special, it's smaller, it's more intimate. Um, One really essential aspect of chamber music is that you are playing with other people. It's only four people. Anytime you're involved or engaged in chamber music, um, there's this immediate connectivity. With four people, you can listen to one person at a time in a very isolated way. Yet it's, there's enough richness and uh, amazingness in the music written for the string quartet that you, of course, can listen to four players as one thing and hear that as a singular thing. I guess just more close to the heart. You can listen to it in a small setting and feel isolated in a good way from everything else out there. Obviously unfortunate that um, you know we can't be physically in the same place, um, but... What it can offer in a time of uncertainty... Certainty is certainly pretty relative. Uh, a musician's life uh, often never feels uh, particularly certain. Some of the most amazing, heartfelt, humanistic music has been written for the string quartet. Not only is it an amazing form of four players bringing something special by working together, but a lot of the composers have brought the best they have to offer also for that medium. So there's a lot to offer in terms of emotional um, journeys to be had. For some people, um, even if they don't play an instrument, they can sort of identify with that, this feeling of, of being, you know, a part of something small but incredibly, incredibly meaningful. There have been lots and lots of performances. Uh, what is these? Remote collaborations. <laughs> that um, ensembles all over the world have been taking part in. Um, and that's actually, uh, to me, really heartwarming and um, give some sort of hope that no matter what the circumstances, people are always going to be trying to make chamber music with, an, with one another. You know, every day is a gift and uh, you just keep going with um, the 
the time that you have that's given. Yeah, the pandemic is in 2020. Bach died uh, in 1750. Um, and yet, so many of us um, are turning to Bach right now. Why turn to Bach? There are artists all over the world posting videos and trying to stay creative since we can't be in concert halls. And one thing that you see in common is Bach. So why are we turning to Bach? That's a very interesting question. Just absolutely well, um, genius it's music. Genius. Such an amazing composer. Makes you feel um, safe and comfort. It's like the comfort food of music. That's kind of easy. The simple cheap answer. Uh, more poetically, I suppose. What's entailed in that genius is some people say that Bach is the composer that sort of started everything. Uh, when it comes to our classical music, that he really showed the way. Bach is this brilliant fuser of um, emotion and intellect. Because when he is writing uh, harmony, he's writing different voices going together. And it's almost as if everyone gets a good part. Each voice can influence how the music is going to go. The craftsmanship is just incredible. How he wove things together, themes. I want to play the cello part. Uh, development. I want to play the violin part. Music and material. Or the viola part, all of them. And yet, when you step back and you're either playing or listening to the music, um, it's just so profoundly moving. Um, even people who um, really don't know anything about classical music find Bach alluring in a certain way. Why turn to Bach now? I mean, why turn to Bach ever? In this time where uh, the brain is confused, the heart is confused, uh, it's so wonderful to turn to someone who has so incredibly uh, mastered this fusion of um, intellect and emotion. It seemed to make sense to go to Bach. project in isolation now, there's the obvious reason that that's just the simplicity of where we are right now as a country as a world as a global unit we are in isolation so in a sense you know when playing Bach we're always the four members of the quartet are, are always somewhat isolated because we're we have our own things to say but the other interesting thing to think about is that Bach wrote the art of fugue um, for an unspecified instrumentation. It's quite special that um, this piece that can actually be imagined or realized by um, one person can also be realized by four, um, but it's a unit of four. When playing in a chamber group, there's always a give and take, there's always interaction uh, between the members. Um, so I suppose if we are going to be recording the piece and we're not all in the same room, well, then we no longer have the interaction. We still have our independence, but we don't have our, the interaction. And so I think that's probably where, in isolation, uh, the, the title makes the most sense. So I think it's actually um, kind of poignant that even though we um, are four people, we are kind of operating as one isolated unit when we are kind of producing this. Recording this project was interesting. We wanted to be able to dive into the nuance of how we play a specific 
way. To replicate the natural, exciting flow, flow that gives it life. Since we're not all in the same room, we don't get to listen and react to each other. We didn't want to take that away. We did not want to record to a click track. Click track. Click track. The obvious choice is to play to a click track. For us, personally, doesn't seem to make sense for something like this piece. Mostly because it feels very confining. Now, the other alternative would be to just have someone record their part alone. And then I could listen to their part in a headpiece and play along with, with that part. For this piece, or, or all of these contrapunctae, it really doesn't work at all. And the reason for that is because oftentimes when you are moving, someone else is not moving. And then when you are not moving, someone else is moving. It's very hard to predict what the other person will do, especially if, as we said earlier, we don't want to be stuck to a click okay. track. So what we decided to do... That took one of our old um, or former live performances. I believe from January 2020. February. An earlier date. We decided, no, let's play exactly along with that old recording. That way, we are all working towards the same goal. The pulse has these gradual fluctuations forward and back to help the music um, live and breathe. This somehow recreates chamber music a little bit better. This was the best way for us to synchronize our musical ideas because you know playing music is it's playing the right notes at the right time is sort of the place where you can start and matching our shaping matching our character even being able to say something strongly um, that's really necessary for music to come uh, across off the page Is that still chamber music? I suppose it depends on who you ask. Um, it's definitely up for debate. In a very basic sense, of course it is. I would say yes it is. Yes, of course it's still chamber music. But it's perhaps a little more difficult. That moment in time is stuck and is not going to move. When we do children's shows, we uh, always say chamber music is basically a small number of people and there's no conductor. So on that level, yes. For me, it's so essential to be reacting in real time. When we're recording against a live performance. When I play chamber music live, when I perform chamber music. Physically being in the same place. That already has the music in full expression and color. I get to react and interact with my colleagues. Being able to watch um, what my colleagues are doing. Essentially, I am still playing it as though I would in the live performance by reacting and relating to what I'm able to hear in a fresh way for every performance. In that sense, those those things were definitely missing from uh, the way we did approach this recording that pulls everything out of me as a player and as a human mentally physically emotionally this is a pretty close approximation uh and by doing that we create what we call music and recording the bach project in isolation it was no different those are some of the best moments in this month i've been home alone having Jason and Ryan and Aviva in my ear and listening to what they're doing and trying to react to it and trying to play with it in a way that supports that, in a way that lets me stand out here or there. And so in that sense, it was absolutely no different than any performance of chamber music I would naturally do in front of people. The challenge of recording this way so we presented a different set of challenges, definitely. It was kind of challenging. The problem is, is that now I'm playing with colleagues who are very, very rude. It was, it was some interesting things that we got to, that I got to experience, and I'm, I'm guessing the others did as well. 
for me, the thing that stood out the most was the amount of micro adjustments that we each make every millisecond to make the music happen. To not be able to react and respond and even talk about um, decisions, musical decisions that we were making. And the reason I became aware of that is I didn't get that. <laughs> They're not listening to me at all. <laughs> I was making adjustments like, I felt everywhere, Dole is very stubborn. Aviva's doing this, oh, they're just, um, they're just doing their own thing, what they want to do. Jason's moving forward here, oh, and I have to fit into it. We're very unaware. Oh, Ryan's slowing down here. That there are other parts around them. What's going on? What we had to do was just, you know, be true to the version of us that was, um, what we were playing along with. It is much easier when uh, your colleagues are active and listening and responding and I'm sure all three of them are feeling the same exact thing. That's definitely counterintuitive. I can still be a good chamber musician but my colleagues are just being terrible. And it also makes it apparent how much they adjust for you when they're actually when you're in person with them. And so that was really fun to get to realize that, but it also made it incredibly, incredibly challenging. Um, but a challenge that was worth doing. And I suppose that's at the core of the Bach project. It's really important for us to think about the future of chamber music, even though we can't be physically together right now. And this process of the four of us uniting to continue doing art, I think is a beautiful allegory for what the globe is having to do has to do, will do. And I think that's always the great thing about art. It shows what life can do or it mimics what life has done. Uh, so it was a pleasure to get to work on the Spock project with my colleagues, even from a distance. Mm -hmm.